What's up guys, Michael Kamalu aka Dr. Gaines here and in this video I'm going to give you an awesome combination exercise that you'll be able to use to work your entire back all in one go. We're talking the upper, middle, and lower traps, the rhomboids, teres major and minor, infraspinatus, and even the lats along with some other muscles all will be hit with this exercise. And to do it, you only need free weights, which can be particularly valuable for you if, say, you don't have access to a cable machine or a pull-up bar. It can be difficult without that type of equipment to know how to hit certain muscles in your back. Now, I want to be clear here, if you're really looking to build your back, this should not be the only exercise that you use to do so. It's not meant to replace all the other core back workouts. Rather, it should supplement them and provide some of its own unique benefits, which we'll go over here in a bit. It can also be an excellent finisher to your back routine, or it can be an awesome exercise if you happen to be rushed and maybe don't have the time to do a full back routine. First, I'll demonstrate how to perform the exercise, and then we'll go into the exercise science behind why it's so effective at hitting all of the major back muscles, including touching briefly on the difference between type one and type two muscle fibers and why you should not do this exercise without including the finisher that I put on the end of it. Let's get to it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go from trap shrugs to slowly bending down. And then with each movement, we're gonna be getting lower and lower and then back up and we're going to finish it off after we've reached exhaustion with some hang pulls to really smash those traps. So here's what it looks like. Grab your bar and shrugs. Slowly start moving forward. Now we start bringing our elbows in further down until we're horizontal and then Start coming back up. And now we're back to shrugs. I'll go one more time. So at the top, we're gonna start doing some hang pulls. You'll notice that I was using what's called a Swiss bar to do that exercise, which I prefer because it allows you to put your hands and joints in a more natural angle. That's better for your wrists and your shoulders. And it also gets better activation specifically of the lower back muscles, which we'll touch on here in a bit, than a straight barbell would. If you don't have access to a Swiss bar, then the next best is to use dumbbells. If you don't have access to dumbbells or dumbbells heavy enough to do this exercise justice, then you can do it with a straight bar. Now let's take a look at the anatomy and biomechanics behind this exercise. And we'll start with how the exercise starts and that's with your body standing straight up and down while you perform shrugs. With free weights, the resistance is always gravity, which is always straight down. So by standing straight up and down while we do those shrugs, we're ensuring that the motion is getting max resistance by going directly against gravity. This elevation of the shoulders works primarily the upper trapezius. Now, I did a comprehensive video on the upper traps and its anatomy and functions on my previous video, so if you haven't seen that, then I will copy a link here and also put it in the video description. But for now, just note that because Many of the upper trapezius fibers originate up here along the neck and then travel straight down to insert on the scapula. They are in charge of pulling your shoulder up. However, in this exercise, we don't just do standard shrugs. After we've done, gone through the combo, we move into several extremely important reps of what are called hang pulls. And why is that? To answer that, it's important to understand that Muscle fibers aren't all the same. They are grossly broken up into two different categories. There are type one muscle fibers, also called slow twitch fibers, 
and there are type 2, also called fast twitch fibers. I'm planning on doing a full video soon where we'll do a deep dive into muscle fiber types and the various differences between them and how you can incorporate that knowledge into your routines and increase the effectiveness of your training. But for now, at a very basic high level, type 1 fibers are called slow twitch because they contract slowly. And type 2 fibers are called fast twitch because they contract very quickly. And it's not that fast twitch fibers prefer to contract quickly, it's that they cannot contract slowly. It's how they're made, it's what they do. So in order to even activate the fast twitch fibers, you have to use very quick, explosive movements. Think sprinting, jumping, boxing, anything that relies on those quick explosive motions are relying on type two muscle fibers. And if you do not use explosive motions, those will not fire and therefore you will not work them. So why is that important to understand when working your back and in this exercise? Well, it's because almost all of the muscles in your back are made up mostly of type one slow twitch fibers. There is one exception. And in fact, the exception is just one part of one muscle and that is the upper trapezius. In a scientific study done by Lindman et al, they took muscle biopsies from their participants and analyzed them to judge the muscle fiber type composition and found that the upper trapezius, even the top of the upper trapezius even, was the only part that was comprised mostly of type two muscle fibers. And while this is a little more pronounced for males, it is true for males and females. And while there can be variety between people due to genetics, for everybody in the upper traps, there is a higher uh, composition of those type two fibers. So what does that mean from a practical perspective? Well, since the upper traps are composed mostly of fast twitch fibers, if you're only doing slow controlled contractions, you are not working most of the fibers in the upper traps. So that's where the hang pulls come in. At the end of the combo, where I demonstrate those, you'll see that I use very quick and explosive movements to shrug and get that bar moving up as high as I can. And by incorporating that explosive shrug along with the slow controlled shrugs that we did previously, we're ensuring that we are hitting all of the fibers in your upper traps. I will make one note of caution here and is that You'll see me in the demonstration bending over about 30 degrees or so before moving into that explosive shrug. Now, one reason why I do that is to make sure I'm getting full extension of the traps before contracting upwards. But another one is that I have personally, as an athlete, done a lot of explosivity training, uh, including vertical jump training, and so my body and specifically the erector spinae muscles in my back are used to doing that explosive motion. They're used to providing some extra thrust via the flexion of the hip in order to get more explosivity moving forward. If you have not done any explosivity training that involves flexion of your back, or you may think you have weak uh, erector spinae muscles, which we'll touch on here in a bit as well, or if you have any spine issues at all, I would not recommend doing that uh, 30 degree bend over. Just keep your body straight up and incorporate that explosive shrug motion just from the vertical position. Now let's look at this exercise when your body is roughly at 45 degrees, or your upper body is roughly at 45 degrees to vertical. In this position, we've now effectively changed the angle of resistance. It's not that gravity changed, it's that our body and the muscles in our upper back changed their position relative to gravity. So think of it this way, if in that 45 degree position, you were to do those same shoulder shrugs straight up relative to your head, they would not be working directly against gravity. So they would be ineffective, or at least not nearly as effective as they would be if you were moving directly against gravity. So when we're at that 45 degree angle, 
in order to work directly against gravity, we need to make the contractions and the pulling motion at an angle relative to our own body. And at that angle, that position with that motion, you are starting to work primarily different muscles. And that's the rhomboids, rhomboid major and minor, and the middle trapezius, also called transverse trapezius. This is most easily seen by looking at the anatomy of the rhomboids. You have rhomboid major lying right here, and then rhomboid minor right on top of it. They both originate along the spine, the thoracic vertebrae, and then insert on the medial border of the scapula. But you'll notice they do not go straight across. They're coming down and across before they insert, which means that pulling your shoulder straight back would not be working those muscles directly. You would have to pull up and back at an angle in order to really work the rhomboids and make sure you're getting full contraction there, which, guess what, is exactly what you're doing in this combo when your body is at an angle. You're pulling back and up at an angle, which is that exact angle almost that the rhomboids are lying. And like I mentioned, this is also where the middle trapezius starts to come into play. Those fibers are moving more straight across. However, when your shoulders are down and protracted, then those fibers are also above their insertion point. So when flexing, they will pull back and retract at an angle, back and up, which is again exactly what you're doing at this part of the motion. I will also note here that these angles aren't exact. I, I mean, I mentioned before that the rhomboids look like they're at an exact angle, and it's true, but especially if you look at the trapezius, there's no one angle. Right? There's many, many, many different angles, and so that's why during this combination movement, you're not just doing the shrugs and then going directly to 45 degrees and then going directly to 90 degrees. You're doing the motion throughout all the various degrees of flexion, and that way you can make sure that you're hitting all of the back muscles to their full potential, regardless of what angle they happen to be lying at on your body. Now let's look at when your body is down at roughly 90 degrees to vertical. Again, we've now changed the effective angle of resistance. Gravity hasn't changed, but our body and our muscles are now at a different angle. And in order for you to work directly against gravity, you would have to have the motion be 90 degrees to your own body. So you would need to be pulling straight back relative to your upper body, which is exactly what you're doing here. And in doing that, we are now going to be hitting the teres major, infraspinatus, lower traps, and the latissimus dorsi, in addition to other muscles. I will just touch briefly on each of those. The teres major originates along the medial border of the scapula and inserts on the medial aspect of the humerus. So when it contracts, it's pulling your arm back and in towards the center of your body. The infraspinatus originates on the back of the scapula, what's called the infrascapular fossa, and then inserts here close to the head of the humerus. So while the infraspinatus is main role is lateral or external rotation. It's going to rotate that head of the humerus. It also is going to pull it back and in. So the retraction motion at the bottom of this combo is hitting both of those muscles as well. The lower traps originate along the vertebrae right about in the middle of your back and then travel up and across to insert on what's called the spine of the scapula. Since the lower traps are lower down on your body than the other heads, people usually think of them just as doing depression of the shoulder or bringing it down, which they do that. However, because they are also behind their insertion point, especially when, again, your shoulders are uh, protracted out in front of you, they also pull back and so are responsible for that retraction motion, which is a very similar concept to working the lats here. 
Most people think that the only way to work the lats is pulling straight down on something. And yes, the lats do that. But if you don't have a cable or a pull-up bar, in order to do that motion with free weights, working against gravity, you'd literally have to be completely upside down in order to have that depression motion working against gravity. But luckily, the lats do much more than just depression of the shoulder. They are a huge muscle that has literally dozens of different origination points and therefore has many, many different roles. So I'm not gonna go over all of them in this video, but for now, the one thing to understand is that, again, because the origination points are behind their insertion point, especially when your arm is flexed out in front of you, they pull back on that arm. They're responsible for retraction of the arm. And because the lats are located down lower on your body, they also pull down while they're pulling back. That's why one of the key form tips in this exercise is when you are down in that 90 degree horizontal position or close to it, make sure that your retraction motion, your pulling motion, is with your elbows down and tucked in to your side. You want to be doing that retraction with your elbows right here. That way, you're pulling your arm down in addition to back, which is exactly what you're doing in that motion. If you let your arms flare upwards, then the retraction motion does not have any downward aspect to it, and you're gonna be working mostly the middle back and some of the upper back. Getting those arms down low, elbows tucked in, ensures that you are also hitting the lower back very well. That's also one reason why I said the Swiss bar and the dumbbells will work the lower back muscles in this combo better than a straight bar will. Because with a straight bar, if you were holding it with open palms, then you'd be able to get a good contraction and uh, get your elbows really low at the bottom of that movement. But it's hard to do shrugs with completely open palms. And that's actually uh, pretty bad for your wrists to do so. So most people will do those with an overhand grip. But when you're doing an overhand grip, it's a lot harder to activate those lower back muscles because you're naturally going to have that movement be higher up on your body. And that's why with almost all exercises that exist, something as simple as how you're holding the bar, the cable, whatever it is, if your palms happens to be flat up versus uh, facing in versus facing down, those all make very big differences on how you're working the muscles and often even what muscles you're primarily working. Finally, let's take a look at the last aspect of this motion. And it is the very act of bending at the hip and going from vertical down to 90 degrees or horizontal and back up. That motion has two main benefits. The first we've already discussed, it changes the angle of your upper body relative to resistance and so changes which muscles you're gonna be hitting mostly and how you're going to hit them. But it also has an additional role and it is working the erector spinae, the last major group of back muscles. A lot of people will refer to the erector spinae as a single muscle, but it's actually a group of muscles. It's the group of muscles that run along the length of your spine, or most of the length of it. And there are three basic groups of them. There's the iliocostalis, the longissimus, and the spinalis. And I say groups because those are actually further subdivided into several other muscles. But for now, all we need to understand is that these muscles are responsible for extension of the spine. Since they originate down on or near the pelvis and then have insertion points all along their length and uh, they insert somewhere along the upper of your body, depending on which muscle you're looking at, when they contract, they pull the back of your spine together, which is what extends your spine. So when you're 
bending over and standing up in this motion, when you are bending over, you're actually working those, these are extremely important muscles to strengthen, yet they're often overlooked because they lie underneath the other back muscles. So in this exercise, as you slowly bend down, you are working the erector spinae muscles eccentrically. And then when you are going back up, you're working them concentrically. Eccentric just means that the motion is going the opposite direction as contraction. It's often referred to as a negative in weightlifting. And then concentric is the motion is going with the contractions. And I will do another video on the various types of contractions and the uh, pros and cons to incorporating them in your routines. And just like that, you have worked every major muscle in your back all in one go. Now, if you really want to build or tone your back as efficiently and effectively as possible while simultaneously making sure that you're using proper techniques to prevent from hurting yourself, as well as making sure that you're hitting all of the muscles along their full potential, their full range of motion and optimal angles, I'm currently in the process of developing an eight week online back program where literally everything down to the sets, reps, the weight that you use, optimal recovery times, supersets, all of it is based on the latest in exercise science. And you can now add your name to a beta tester waitlist for that program. Everyone who puts their name on the beta tester list before it launches will get 50% off of the program when it is available, and they'll be able to try it out several weeks before it's available to the general public. There's no down payment or deposit or anything necessary. Just put your name on the wait list if you're interested and I will leave that link in the video description below. And guys, if you thought this video was helpful, I would really appreciate you hitting that like button and leaving me a comment below. Those things really help others to find my channel. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so that you don't miss any of my future content. And speaking of future content, if you have any specific requests for things that you'd like to see in the future, I will leave a feedback and content request form also in the video description below. And I really do use the submissions from that form to help me decide what content to prioritize. Thanks for watching and until next time.